Okay, it is 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 Eastern, so I guess we can get started overall with the webinar. Um, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, by the way, Alex, are you seeing my screen okay? Everything, you're seeing the yes. presentation right now? Awesome, yes. thank you so much. Um, thanks everyone for participating and everybody who's, who's joining, watching this, um, seeing this on their own time. Really appreciate you taking the time to to see a little bit about what we're what we're doing at IATS with um, with Dryad, and overall just to give a, a brief sort of context and introduction to this webinar, um, Brickwork for many many of our clients who use Salesforce and use our our Salesforce product Brickwork, which I'll get more into in a minute, so no need to memorize anything right now. Uh, we've always been hearing a lot of things from our our clients, and we're always trying to create um, better connections with the community of other providers out there, create connections with consultants and integration so that we can really offer the best solutions to our clients. And for that reason, we've, um, we've, you know, taken the time here to partner with Alex, who has a really great tool for tax receding in, uh, directly in Salesforce, CRA compliant, um, which, you know, works very nicely with Brickwork. And for today's webinar, what we really want to do is talk a bit about that relationship, Go in and show a functional demo of how it looks and and yeah and when we've got some time we'll take some questions so um overall here as i mentioned with the agenda we'll do a couple brief introductions first just to so you know who we are uh in our organizations we'll talk a little bit you know we're going to spend a bit of time on on the slides just as briefly as possible just to talk a bit about some of the key context first about IATS and brickwork and then about um alex's organization and, and their seating we're going to go into a solution demo which will take up the bulk of the time um, overall and then we'll make sure we have some time available for for q a at the end so to get started alex why don't you kick us off with a bit of an introduction and, and let everybody know a bit about your background and, and sort of what you're what you're here to share you figure after asking this question or having been asked this question so many times, I would have a really good scripted answer, but I, I'll do my best. I don't, it's a short answer. So, so I'm Alex, I write my name as Alexander, but if you do speak to me, I do prefer Alex. I've been a Salesforce consultant now for 11 years in CRM space for like 20 years. And I'm a, consider myself to be a solution architect. I've been doing consulting for as long as that. And it was a few years ago that I realized through some of the pains that my clients were having, who were primary, uh, nonprofits, both in Canada and the US, that there was a gap, there was a missing need for tax receding, that there were not too many viable uh, options for Canadian tax receding. So I launched the the uh, app Dryad Receding, and it's been about two years now, uh, we're a small, still small company growing, of course, and uh, it's been such a pleasure to be able to give back to the nonprofit community because it's, it's such an amazing place to be. Um, that's kind of the summary. I mean, there's a lot more going on, but for today's purpose, I think we'll just stick with that. Great, thanks, Alex. And uh, on my end, so uh, my name is Sebastian. I'm part of IATS Payments by Deluxe. So anyone who, who's here in the organization is likely, or anyone who's here participating likely is familiar with IATS, I'm, I'm assuming. And, and essentially what we are is the, the payment processor that's dedicated exclusively to nonprofit organizations. So. I joined the organization in August, so since that time, it's been really great, and Alex really kind of nailed it there. It's it's a really rewarding place to be working with nonprofit organizations, um, and it's great to be able to create these sorts of partnerships in order to be able to to better serve all those individual needs of those conversations that we have. The things here, really, we want to be able to listen to our audience and adapt so that we can offer the best solutions possible that are going to work in the best interest of nonprofits overall. Uh, who am I within the organization? I, my name, uh, my technical title is consultant partner manager, um, which essentially just means I, I, I reach out to people like Alex and say, hey, do you want to do stuff together? And we meet up and we do webinars like this and we try to find ways where we can integrate our solutions so that ultimately our clients can can benefit uh, long term. Um, and, you know, we've heard so many times people bringing up the the need for CRA compliant tax receipts in their in their Salesforce ecosystems. Is, is so high we really want to just reach out and understand who else is out there who's doing it extremely well so that we can recommend and endorse and, and um, showcase how those different integrations work together so um let's go forward and just talk a bit you know a little bit of slides here i'll, I'll be as briefly as possible but for those of you who aren't familiar with iats 
So I have payments by Deluxe was founded um, over 20, nearly 30 years ago now, uh, based here in Vancouver, BC, where I am right now, with the goal of helping nonprofits uh, process donations in a way that's easier, more efficient, and that works directly in their context. So in that time, we've created an, uh, a customer base, about 16,000 nonprofit clients, processed over $10 billion in donations since 2016, and uh, received a, a a satisfaction rate of about 80%. And all of this, these are nice numbers for us to hear, but ultimately what they speak to is um, you know, the pride that we have and the trust that we've garnered in our community and, and things that we wanna maintain. We wanna continue to, to be able to offer solutions that, that work uh, for our nonprofit clients. With that as well, we've created integrations with over 100 technology partners. Overall, the idea of payment processing and, and the experience I've had so far is that payments are typically not a conversation most people wanna, wanna Think about because it is complicated and it's it's you know sometimes seems unnecessarily complicated uh, but really we want to contextualize what payments mean in fundraising and in terms of what are the actual processes that nonprofits have in order to engage with their constituents in order to uh, manage their sustainers all these things are important in, in that uh, base of integrated partnerships so important to make sure that we're uh, embedded in the context where nonprofits are operating and a little bit about Brickwork. So Brickwork is our free native Salesforce app that works with nonprofit success, success pack, nonprofit success pack, sorry, or NPSP. This supports one-time or recurring credit card or EFT transactions online through either an integrated virtual terminal, through our online forms tool, um, or through you know a, a various number of those different integrations that I mentioned. And ultimately, the value that we want to offer with Brickwork is really a, a simple streamlined solution that's highly customizable, aligned with some of those sort of benefits that a lot of organizations get from choosing Salesforce to begin with, so that all the all donor and transactional information can be reported on. Uh, you can uh, simplify the way business process and, and operations are, are run and do so all with the highest level of, of compliance standards um, in the industry, not having to, to worry about Really quickly, a bit about how Brickwork works, and this is relevant for this conversation as well. So if we look on the on the left-hand side, up, down, this is a typical donation process when you're using any payment processor. You could replace that. Okay. Where you know, your donor contributes, that donation is processed, your payment processor communicates with the bank, creates the settlement information. We've got lots of documentation on, on that process, and it's always an interesting one to understand and see exactly what happens when you know somebody inserts or swipes the card. Um, and finally, you know, you receive that from organization so you can use those funds to uh, sustain programs and operations and so forth. Organizations that use Salesforce will have Brickwork as a tool that communicates with their payment processor directly in their uh, constituent management system environment. And that's working with NPSP, leveraging some of those native objects, which we're going to show today in, in, our, in the demo that, that Alex and I will do as well as third-party apps that you can also get on Salesforce's App Store App Exchange. And one of those in this context is Dried Receiving. And, and the purpose of today's conversation is to show how all these different uh, systems can work seamlessly to really uh, give a lot of efficiencies for your organization. And given that, I want to hand it over to, to Alex to, to share a little bit about Dryad as well. Right. So like I said, uh, Dryad as a consulting firm has been around for 20 years in the CRM space or rather in the Salesforce space since about uh, 2013. Some of the clients that I've had the privilege to work with, uh, some big ones. Um, and it was going through some of those uh, projects that when the need for this tax proceeding came up, a lot of homegrown solutions, you know, Conga Composer type style, DocGen. And uh, I said, you know, there has to be a better way. Uh, and so, yeah, in 2022, the app was published. It's actually the only tax receding application that's published on the App Exchange. So it's gone through the Salesforce security review, which was very important for me, and to you know give a great sense of credibility and trust to clients. And uh, I'm very proud of the results so far, and it's it uh, keeps on growing. We can jump to the next slide. I think it talks a bit more about it. So yeah, it also uses NPSP. There is. Uh, for the new nonprofit cloud, there is a version being built. It's currently in development, so that's a future roadmap. But for right now, uh, it's NPSP. Um, a lot of flexibility in how it's being used. But in addition to being Salesforce certified, I'm also UX certified. So taking that that uh, end user experience at heart, 
making sure that the steps are very guided, that if there's any kind of error messages, you understand what the error message is, for example, and how to correct it. This guided process, so you can't get yourself into too much trouble. You, you have a way to help you. Uh, it doesn't require a lot of training, um, so it's really quick to get your users up and running with the application, very flexible, very, very powerful under the hood, but it looks very native, very uh, integrated to Salesforce, even though it's a package and uh, yeah, supports all that stuff. So yeah, uh, that's basically the features like I was mentioning. So you know, security, privacy, obviously a very big concern uh, because these are tax receipts. Um, templates have a very powerful way of being able to customize them or you have a very powerful way to customize them. And it has like, there's just like a billion features that I, I can't even get through all of them because there's too many, but the idea is that it's really, really powerful. I mean, 200,000 receipts in a day in the next version, which is in testing phase, we're actually toward the end of that testing phase. So these are like Salesforce's limits. The, the app itself doesn't impose too many limits. It's more like how far can we push Salesforce? Um, but just because it can do, of course, 200,000 doesn't mean it's not well suited all for, also for smaller organizations. It does have that ability to scale up and down according to your particular needs. But the idea is that if it can work for the, the larger ones, it can definitely work for you. And it includes even federated uh, charities, the ones would have multiple charity numbers. So you can have multiple uh, receipt templates, receipt um, numbers, uh, who the sender email address is, for example, all these things per charity, all within a single Salesforce instance. And yeah, it's, um, I mean, the, one of the advantages, by the way, just to go back one second, it was to say that um, advantage by being in Montreal uh, is there's a certain French perspective as well. It's also the only app that is fully bilingual on both sides, both the Salesforce user's perspective and of course the donor side, everything is translated into French, I mean, it's English first and then translated to French, so it's fully bilingual. So that's a quick intro. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to, to looking into it again in, in more detail. Sebastian, I noticed your, your audio is coming in just a little bit faint sometimes. Yeah, let me let me see if I can fix that quickly. In the meantime, I did see a quick question come in um, that I want to address. I think it makes sense to address it right here. Um, and it's sure. the question's asking, is it possible to use Dryad to create tax receipts? when entering manual donations to, to Salesforce. Yes. So for example, yes. check donations that were not processed through IS. Yeah. That's right. It is. And I think that's a, yeah, something that's an important distinction. At, and I think that's one of the things that adds value. And sorry if my audio is cutting out here still while I'm going through a too lengthy description. Um, I don't know if that helps at all. This headset. So far, so, yeah, you're good. Okay. Okay. This headset isn't, isn't, isn't the best, but you know, it, it it's temperamental. Uh, but overall, sorry, as I was saying, the idea is that these are two separate um, apps that you can get from App Exchange that work really nicely together because um, ultimately we want to create really easy integrations so that nonprofits can take them and go. But ultimately, you can absolutely use Dryad receding on you know using your own set of tools and integrating your own different processes. Similarly with Brickwork, but together we just in this in this demo we just wanted to showcase. Um, you know, the power and the synergy of them together. Sorry, I said synergy. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it's not a word that I, I like using. <laughs> um, but with that said, let's get into Salesforce to show a couple examples. And yeah, if any uh, any other questions, if there's any other quick ones, we'll try to answer them as we go along. But if, if not, we'll we'll save them to the end and, and plenty of space to, to answer them as well. I think that one is important just overall in this part of the conversation as well. To, so to get started, uh, you download Brickwork from App Exchange, you install it in your Salesforce environment, and when you open it, you get this page right here. So this is sort of our landing page, which those of you familiar with Brickworks will, will, will know quite well. Overall, it has um, you know, a lot of the information that you might need to use for, for installation, setup, for support. Uh, we take a lot of pride in our, in our customer care team and our ability to you know, give us a call and have an actual human being reach back out and, and pick up the phone. So we really want to be uh, a payment process that, that is focused on what are the needs of nonprofit organizations and what are the things that are important to them. Um, as I mentioned, Brickwork is fairly, uh, when I mean minimal, I, I sort of want to align myself a lot with what Alex was saying there in terms of those UX principles, because what we want to create is the minimum amount of new things, record types or or custom objects in Salesforce while creating the maximum amount of value and customizability to our to our uh, organization, the clients that use them. So let's see exactly what we can do with Brickwork. And by doing that, I'm going to hop into one of my donor records. I'm a donor for this organization, 
so we can see within our um, our contact record page we have a few custom objects on the right so you can see here for example we've got one called IATS transactions this is one that comes with IATS where we're registering every transaction that gets processed through the IATS payment processor um, this is often used to trigger a lot of automations and, and interesting customizations um, IATS customer codes is another one this one's a, a very interesting and very important one as well because essentially what this does is it tokenizes and stores a method of payment directly in Salesforce in a way that's absolutely secure. So either credit card or, or banking details for an EFT transfer. So you can have a donor, um, you know, either have a recurring donation or one-time donations without having to input their credit card information or banking details every single time. We wanna make that as simple and as seamless as possible for our um, for organizations who work with, uh, who, you know, who, who are trying to uh, achieve a, and grow their donor bases. Um, I'm going to get into a bit here. This is a bit of a spoiler, so I don't want to go over to receipts here yet. But what we can do overall, one of the uh, one of the bigger features that comes with IAT that a lot of people get um, a lot of value from is is this IATS button right here. So this is a button that can be added to either your contact objects, your opportunities objects, if it's you know a pledge or a recurring donation that you want to have a one time payment to. Um, and essentially, what it does is it, it connects with the IATS payment gateway. And it's going to give us a little uh, what we call a virtual terminal or a virtual point of sale, essentially, um, on directly in Salesforce. So here you can see that it's connected to my my merchant account. Um, I'm using a certain customer code, so you can see it's not showing me any credit card details. It just has this sort of string, um, and that's going to represent a method of payment that I'm going to be using in this case. Um, you can see all my donor information is automatically populated in. I can select either one time or a recurring donation. For the sake of this demo, I'm just going to do it one time just to keep things simple. And here you can see that all this information is already pre-filled. saves me a lot of time. And I can select, let's say, let's pick an easy number to recognize, um, 67.99. That's how much I want to donate today. So when I hit process one time uh, payment, what's going to happen is this connects to our processor make sure it's connecting with the, the donor's bank account authorizing ensuring that there's enough sufficient funds for the transaction and we re receive the result of okay transaction complete and when we close our page here and refresh contact we'll see a couple things are were just created so we have here for example a transaction a new one for right now this time for 67.99 exactly the amount we just saw and because of the model we're using, you'll see as well, we have an opportunity created mark close one at that same amount of 67.99 uh, with a receipt status eligible, which is where I want to sort of pass the ball off to Alex to, I'll, I'm going to give Alex quickly here, uh, ability to, to, to control my screen, because we just figured out that's a feature that we can do here, which is pretty neat. And Alex, I'd love it if you could show us a bit about how we can sort of take these opportunities that are created and how we can issue these CRA compliant tax receipts directly using Dryad. Great, so what I'll do is actually I'll take a step backward for a moment to go back to that contact record. I'm not able to get control yet though. Okay, let me try again. This is exactly what I was worried would happen. There we go. Uh, it should be should be working for me. There we go. Yep, that works, thanks. So I'm gonna Thank go back you. to Sebastian as a contact first, just for a moment. Just to point out a couple of fields that uh, Dryad adds. Uh, the two of them on the contact record is the receipt delivery here and the receipt occurrence. So the receipt delivery allows you or allows the donor to specify how they want to receive receipts, right? It's, the choices are either email or mail. You know, these days typically it's mail, but sometimes people still want to get something in the, in the mail, snail mail. And then the occurrence is basically how often should they get those receipts? Single means every single time that I or this donor makes a donation as an opportunity, they want a receipt versus consolidated means they might make multiple donations opportunities throughout the year, but they only want one receipt for all of them. If we're talking about recurring donations, that's always consolidated, but these are specific to the, the, the individual donations. So as you can see, Sebastian has set it for email and for single. Then if we go back to your opportunity that you just created, uh, you'll have a list of fields that are specific for receiving. So you can see here, when was the last receipt? Of course, we haven't built one yet, so that's fine. 
Uh, these are features we don't have time to get into. It has to do with more with the federated model. If you have multiple uh, sub-charities or charters within your organization, you can basically be able to set up uh, you know, who is going to be the receiving account for this particular uh, donation. A receipt template also is an override that if you want to have a specific template uh, to generate that receipt for this particular opportunity, you can do it over here. Otherwise, as I'll show you a bit later on, there are some general settings that you set for basically system-wide. Uh, you also have the ability to, uh, as Sebastian mentioned on top there, we have the receipt status as eligible. But if for some reason you said, you know what, I don't want to give a receipt for this particular donation, you have the ability to check that box, add some comments for the reason why that is. Uh, there is some advantage information, which in case you give certain advantages as a return. But the idea is that this receipt status is a formula field. It's calculated based on CRA compliant rules, how much you've donated, if there's an advantage, certain thresholds, all this kind of stuff. I'm uh, making sure, of course, that the contact or the, the donor of this opportunity has a mailing address. So all those checks and balances are already built in. And if you're eligible, that means you're good to go. You can create a receipt. If you're not eligible to create the receipt, it would say ineligible, and it would actually tell you in briefly uh, what the problem is. So again, guided type of uh, approach. So at this point, we're ready to go. We already closed one. We know we've got received the payment. So I'm able to click here at the top here, new receipt. And that will generate your receipt for you based on all the settings I'll show you a bit later on. And the idea here is, again, it says a receipt is created, and it even tells you where it is, just in case your page layout may be different. Uh, Dryad doesn't assume or doesn't impose any page layouts or doesn't worry about any record types. Um, so that it allows you to configure the page as you want, you know, dragging the fields that are specific for the application to your existing ones. Uh, and this one's just a reminder to say, you know, here's where you can find it. You'll see a lot of these kinds of things. I won't call them out all the time because there's too many of them. But the idea is that once that has been generated, you now have a receipt installment, which is kind of a junction object or an object between the receipt and the donation which basically allows many-to-many -many type of relationships. Technical, but yeah. Let's just go straight to the receipt. So uh, the receipt is a copy of, it's not a uh, lookup of, it's a copy of the data from either the contact record or from the opportunity record or from the reoccurring donation record. You can see here it was issued today for this year, for this amount, it was receipted. You have different features like single receipt versus consolidated original versus replacement, because of course you may want to void and re-receipt, uh, re reissue receipts. You've got donation dates, uh, consolidated dates in case you're, this is a consolidated receipt, some donation information. And then this is a really cool feature because it tells you what has happened already. It tells you, for example, that a PDF has been created. And because you normally, as a, of course we're a system administrator here within the Salesforce instance, but uh, if you're not, if you're just a user, you will not have the ability to make any of these kinds of edits. You will only be able to interact with the receipt from these buttons here on top. So um, if I click on, for example, email receipt, and I go forward with that transaction, it, when I complete it, it will, have, it will automatically check the email sent checkbox. So you know which ones have been sent, which ones haven't. Uh, if you wanna email it from outside of Salesforce, because this does use the native Salesforce email functionality, which has certain limits. But if you're using a marketing cloud or a Pardot or any other application, you can, through automation, either manually set it as emailed or again, through automation, set it as emailed or as printed, or you can void, or you can do other things. So as you're interacting with the buttons, there are basically these features here, which will then be updated, just so you know you don't do the same thing more than once. And again, formula field to tell you, you know, what, what needs to be done here. We, we do want it to be emailed. Now, we want it to be emailed because the donor has specified, as I showed you earlier, that they want to receive um, these receipts by email and the fact that they have an email address. If either of those was not true, like they, even though they might specify that they want it by email, but they don't have an email address, well, then the status would be to be printed because you can't email something that, uh, to someone that doesn't have an email address. So again, all these kinds of checks and balances so that you don't have to think, you're just able to do what you need to do. Um, but that's all the data for the receipt. And then most importantly and critically is the PDF, which is saved within the native files feature of Salesforce. Uh, so I'll show you an example here that we built. This is just a sample template. Of course, you got pictures, as many as you want, text, layout options, all these kinds of things, which I'll show you shortly. Um, this is just a sample to, to start with. There's even a, a library that I've built so that you can 
not have to build from scratch, but you can just take a library and modify an existing one as opposed to, to starting from scratch. Um, and then, yeah, from there, it depends on what you want to do next, right? If you want to email it, I mean, this is not really a valid email address, but just to show you, for example, again, confirmation, you know, are you sure you want to email it? Gives you some information about, um, because we're using now the, the professional edition or the premium edition, it gives you a bit more information. Again, that multi-charity factor comes into play. But the idea is that it confirms who you want to send it to, whether you want to use the default email template, which is the native email template in Salesforce, or select another template and then you know to email it. I won't do it for this demo. There's just too much to show anyway. Uh, but voiding reissuing also happens where it links the two receipts, so there's no worries about that kind of stuff. Um, and that's basically the, the core functionality about the receipt itself. I was going to move next to just to show you how that template works and then show you some of the settings. Great. So, um, oh, yeah. So, the, yep. I mean, you, we could stay within the brickwork. I guess I'll, guess I'll stay there and I'll just switch to receipt temp, uh, receipt template. And I think here's a good opportunity as well to, to go shift. back to sort of that. Yeah, we, to shift and to show a bit about, um, let's shift it to Dryad as well into the app okay. here as well. To show a bit about sort of that concept we mentioned earlier about how these things sort of work independently within Salesforce, but still can you know, they hand off a lot of this information in a way that's very seamless. So here, for example, when you're in the drive, if you went into your opportunities or your receipts, you'd see exactly the same work that we just did. And, and you know, that's one of the benefits of Salesforce as well, as a tool to be able to have all these different work, um, objects and being able to have different people using them in different contexts while all having the exact same information. So. Yeah, so we can get back exactly that. So these are the tabs that come with Dryad uh, receipting. Uh, these are all the standard ones up until obviously receipts um, batch receipts are things you, when you want to do things in bulk because everything i've shown of course is more like a one-off but if you have thousands or hundreds of thousands of receipts to generate you're not going to want to do that manually one by one uh, i'll jump to that in a moment um, because everything is asynchronous because if we're generating large volumes of receipts you don't want to have to stick around and wait for it so everything is asynchronous and there are various logs that you can check to make sure that everything is going well but what I wanted to jump into next, uh, just for the moment, was the receipt template. Uh, this one is probably the most technical part of the application. And the, the idea here was I wanted to make sure it was built with the maximum flexibility. So you do need to have a little bit of HTML experience to be able to do it. This is not a Visual Force page. This is really HTML with merge tags, merge fields. Um, so you can see here, I don't know if you guys can read, but if you can read HTML, the idea is that you get certain columns and paragraphs and sections, and then you have these little merge fields like this, which are the data that comes from the receipt object itself. But again, I don't want you to have to remember and think about what fields are available. So right here on the panel, you have all the fields that are available to you out of the box. Of course, you can add fields to the receipt, some custom, um, custom fields on the receipt to your liking, but these are the ones that come out of the box. So again, I can just copy paste more than having to memorize. I do plan to have a future release where it's a bit more, a bit easier to modify the HTML. So it's more like a template, you know, drive and drop. That's a future roadmap type of thing. And uh, for now, it, this is the maximum flexibility, but does require a bit of technical knowledge to be able to do. As you cool can see, say. it's a... Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt, but I will say on on that I did try playing around with it for a while to build a template, and even I, as a very non technical person, was able to sort of figure out some of the basics there. So it, it took me a little bit, of, I mean, not too long to figure it out, but overall, I mean, I I did, you know, as somebody who was using it in in a demo context to try to create something, I you know, I think the flexibility is absolutely there to change it in any way that you need it to be changed. So um, I think what's interesting there as well is the pre build visualization visualization feature as well to be able to see it as you're working on mm. it and a few other things there as well because I think for a lot of people just looking at the HTML it's a, a little abstract but having that button and being able to see it is, is really valuable too yeah I mean if this is a concern I can speak more to it the idea is first of all one there's temp there's a library that you can copy and paste from so that gives you a starting point uh, two I wanted like I said I want a maximum flexibility I didn't want to have and I've seen some receding applications where you have only allowed two images and they have to go here and here yeah. By going for HTML, you have maximum flexibility. Um, I yeah, the, the preview is great. I don't know if you used it, so let's check it out. The idea for the preview, it's not really meant to show you the exact layout, but it just makes sure that the the fields are merged. So you again, the, the CSS or the styling of this is a bit off. 
but the idea is that it does allow you the, the ability to confirm that you're able to see the field, that the fields are being populated correctly mm -hmm. before you actually build any kind of receipts. Um, it's a bit wonky here with this demo, but the idea is you know you you can see everything there. So yeah, the idea of having that uh, the the template, the library rather, and the preview does help you um, build these things out. And because it's an object, I was I was saying earlier, you can have as many as you want. So you can have one for the entire organization all the time. You can have one for special occasions, or events. You can have one per charter per event. So you can have maximum flexibility of how many you want uh, and when to use them. I wanted to jump next to the settings. Uh, also another UX type of experience where I didn't want uh, my users, my customers to have to go to custom metadata and settings and whatnot. So really, you know, graphical interface to be able to set all the settings in the application, which does look a bit like NPSP settings for a reason. Uh, and here's where you're able to specify the primary charity, or if you only have a single charity, uh, the, the features. So again, previews when you can, so you know you have the right links for the logos, the, the address, which you know very easy to modify these kinds of things. Just you know make those changes here. You've got general settings where you put in your registration number, you know all the, the receipt, receipt, uh, receipt stuff that you need to know, who the authorized person is and their signature. Some advanced features which most people don't need to look too much about, but again, fully customizable behind the hood stuff type stuff if you ever wanted to go there. Uh, the API key is used for a web service because there's a really cool feature. Uh, again, trying to keep um, people happy and, and keep their life simple. If you can imagine you have thousands or even hundreds, but hundreds or thousands of people, of donors, who want to have their receipts printed and mailed to them, rather than having to go to individual receipts, go click on that you know, download file or file, download it, go to the next receipt and repeat you know, hundreds of times potentially. There is a feature in the premium edition of this application that allows you to merge PDFs. Merging features is not native to Salesforce. It's the only one that cannot be done directly in Salesforce. So there is a web service that calls out that will merge up to 100 PDFs into a single file. So if you have 1,000 PDFs to generate, you now have, you know, after merging them, you'd only have 10 to download. And again, I offer features and, and functionality to make even those 10 really, really simple to download so that you're just doing a couple of clicks and then able to print out these 10 page uh, or 100 page rather uh, PDFs rather than 100 one page PDFs. So that's a really a bit about that. Uh, field mappings as well. Um, one of the principles in addition to being UX driven is um, data driven architecture. So these are the fields that specify here are the, one, the fields on the opportunity that I want copied to the receipt. These ones, of course, come out of the box. You can activate them or deactivate them, which I wouldn't normally recommend. But the more interesting part is being able to add your own. So if ever you wanted to create a field or a, um, a value on the, your PDF receipt, all you need to do is create the field on the receipt, create the field on the opportunity, and then use this tool to say, you know, copy field from opportunity to field to uh, receipt. So it's a you know, full list of things. And you add it and you're good to go. So, you know, very data driven. You don't have to play around with custom metadata or custom settings. And it applies for not just the opportunity, but also for the reoccurring donation. Um, everything we've done so far, as I mentioned, is done manually. You do have the ability to auto schedule receipt generation and or or and emailing them. So if you only want to generate receipts and you want to do it every day or every 10 minutes, maybe you get web donations, for example, you could do it every 10 minutes. Maybe you only want to create the receipts and then decide later on how to process them. Or you say, you know what, for anyone that can be, as we saw earlier, you know, can be emailed or should be emailed or to be emailed, I think was the exact wording, then this will do that automatically as well. So this is a really a hands-off type of situation where the system runs on its own, optional to use or not. And then some app settings, you know, what the version we're on, what the edition is, and then if you want to register from the standard edition to the pro or the premium edition, you can do that here as well. So that's basically behind the scenes of that. I was going to move to batch receipts next. How much? How am I doing on time? You got. You, we've got about uh, ten more minutes. Perfect. I don't need ten minutes. Perfect. But yeah. uh, let's go for batching because batching is now in between the one-offs that you would do, you know, for a particular single opportunity or reoccurring donation. And what we just saw, the auto generation, where it's just more or less running on its own. Here is a what I would call a control panel that allows you to do many things at the same time. So 
The first three are about generating the receipts and just generating the receipts. That's creating the receipt record and the PDF. And then the last four, because we're in the premium edition, is what to do with them. So either emailing them, setting them as emailed, uh, merging them, as I mentioned earlier, or, and this is a really cool one, is once you've merged it, to be able to print them really easily. Again, more information on the right, guided type of stuff, so you don't have to remember, you know, what does this do again, and how do I, da, da, da. it's all written for you. Let's go for the first one, just to keep things simple for the demo. So I want to be able to create receipts for all eligible uh, opportunities. I have a criteria method of how I want to choose for those uh, opportunities, either by a payment date of a range, and I got a predefined range here, or of course you can go custom range. You know, again, UX experiences. You know, rather than having to set an end date, we know, you know, it, most likely you're going to want to do it for today, so it's set for today, uh, just as a shortcut. Or you can go by batch, which is the NPSP batch import batch, or if you're using the premium edition and you want to build the receipts for a particular charter or sub account, you can do that. But let's just for this demo stick with something really simple just to get maximize the data here. And then this will show you a nice little grid. I mean, there's only two data uh, points here because it's a demo, but if you know there was dozens and dozens, you'd be able to have that list. Um, and then to basically choose, yeah, I wanna generate receipts for you know, all of them, or you know maybe just for this one or for that one. Um, even this layout here is customizable. This uses field sets to determine what columns we're showing here. So anytime you ever see this data table, it is a customizable data table according to what you want to show. I just do, you know, best guesses for you. And then let's just do the receipts for these two. It basically does its running things. Okay, great. The process will continue in the background, and you can go check out the logs to see how things are going. So, you know, imagine I was doing dozens of these things. Uh, you don't want to stick around. You let it do its thing. You can, you know, do other activities and come back at some point in the future. Let's just go to the logs though to see this to its completion. So the logs basically is just an ability to see all the activities that's been, that's been happening related to receding over the course of the last whatever, another data object. And you can see here as of today, there were two receipts that were, we were creating receipts. There were two that were targeted and two that were processed. You can click on it for more details. Uh, so 100% complete. You can see the, the links to those rece receipts. So great, that is done. We can then move on to the next phase, which is maybe, let's say, let's try emailing them. Again, similar functionality. It takes all the receipts that are, can be and should be emailed. And, you know, similar process. I can just click on this, click on this, and it'll just, I won't do it, but it'll send off the email to the various donors with a nice uh, email template, which is what you choose from the Salesforce native email template and that PDF that I showed you earlier to the individual donor. So really easy way to simplify your life. I won't do it just for the sake of not wanting to spam too many people. The merge, I didn't actually test to see if that was going to work. Oh, cool. So the merging is, is you know, the receipt has already been generated. It could be it could be emailed or printed. Generally, you'd want it to be printed. And then you'd basically say, okay, I want to you know take these two receipts here and I want to merge them to create a single receipt instead of two of them. Uh, similar process, it runs in the background. I'm gonna open up another tab. Can I do that this way? No, I can't. We'll go by it this way. So it's merged. I know sometimes it, oh, look at that bad, of course. It's not gonna be a demo unless there's at least one error. <laughs> uh, I should have known that, but the idea is that what really, what, you know, when this is successful, and this is just for this particular org, the the attachment is stored in that log. So that that merged uh, file is appears here, and then when you would go back to say, okay, now that I have all these merge logs with these attached PDFs, I can come here, and again, I don't know if this is good. No, no, okay, it didn't work. But the idea is that it would give you a, a data table, and the last column in the data table is that file. So you just have to click on that file for that batch receipt log, which will download the file. And you click a little checkbox saying, I've downloaded it. And you can go line by line. So within a few seconds, you're able to indicate that all of the receipts that you've merged have been printed. You've already downloaded them to your computer to be able to actually physically print them. Uh, and then click next to, to process everything. So really, really keeps your life simple, uh, automates everything behind the scenes. And, and guides you, like I said, along the way. So that's the 
what I was hoping to show today. And I'm happy to answer more questions because there's like a lot more that this thing does, but you know, we gotta, we only have a certain amount of time to show what we can. Yeah, you can't give give it all away. You gotta save some of, save some of it, right? Um, I do have, I think one question that I, I, it's not from the audience, but I think one that that a lot of people might have overall. And, and I mean, the tool is, it clearly has a lot of functionality and a lot of power for people in, in so many different use cases that have been thought out. The question I think would be, how do you go, what does the process look like from going from, you know, doing these things manually or through another workaround process to getting to this point? Like, what does the timeline look like? What is the involvement uh, from drive to seating? What does the support look like? If you could just walk us a little bit through that process and, and how that looks for, for most organizations. Yeah, so the idea is that, um, so the app itself is a um, subscription, right? You're paying a monthly fee to be able to use the app. There is a one-time fee for installation, and that takes takes care of everything, installing everything or installing the app and configuring everything within a sandbox and in your production org. Uh, all we need is a certain, a certain amount of assets from uh, from you is like the, the logo, uh, the, the person who's authorized to do the gift transaction recognition and a bunch of data. But basically we, it's, it's, it's a handhold, like um, it's a white glove service is the word I'm looking for. So we will configure it for you. Training is included in that package as well. Uh, so we wanna make sure that you are you know, really comfortable using the system before we hand the keys over to you. Um, but of course there is support. It's 24 hour support by email. Uh, you can, I have you know, great references in terms of people who have been able to give feedback on the app saying, okay, we'd be great if it could do this. And you know, adding it to the roadmap is definitely something I always want to consider because I do want to improve it. I don't know how offhand how many features are coming in the next version. I would estimate somewhere between the 15 number range. And most of them came from client requests. So definitely mm -hmm. feedback mechanism helps. And we're open to that. Um, you know, and, and I really take a partner approach, meaning I want to make sure you're successful, right? I'm just a, a tool to help you become more powerful, more successful. And if I can find a way to do that, I'm, I'm, I'm motivated to do that. It gives me great pleasure to do that. Uh, there's also another service that I offer is more of a premium service, optional. But if you really just don't want to deal with anything, and you just want, you know, us to take over and really end to end, um, I have that possibility too, and as many receipts as you want, as many templates, if there's any additional automation that needs to be undone or um, data migrations or data, uh, like setting up data preferences, anything of course related to tax receipting, not just uh, general consulting, uh, there is a feature or service for that as well. So uh, different levels of customability. I, I'm basically in this, in a sense though, a product, right? I'm not trying to be a consulting partner. I do typically work with, or I have worked with consulting partners. So as part of a larger project, moving to Salesforce or adding new features to Salesforce, you might be working with a, a consulting company. I'm just trying to be the product, but I want to be a one-stop shop for product. I, you don't have to, you can choose not to work with a consulting company for the for the app portion of it, or you could, you have that flexibility. The choice is all yours. So yeah, just making sure that you have those options, you feel safe, secure, and reassured that um, it'll work for you. And there's a guarantee that actually it'll work too. So um, Great. you're always uh, in good hands. I think we've got Perfect. a couple yeah. more questions. Yep. Just, uh, just before uh, we run out of time, we have a question from Dana. If there's a limit on how many receipts or emails run per batch? So the, uh, the, the, the batch functionality doesn't, I mean, the limits really are more or less Salesforce limits. So. Um, in that data grid, I only show the first, if there's more than a hundred, there's no point showing a data grid in, or data table anymore. It just gives you the, the number and you do them all or not. Uh, emails, it, Salesforce limits as of today is 5,000 per day. So uh, if it hits that limit, it just basically stops and you can continue the day after. If you're using another type of tool to email, of course, you can do that as well. Uh, for generate, re generating receipts, because we're using native uh, functionality in Salesforce, there's a limit of Salesforce of 200,000 per day. You can create a case that can go into 500,000. So the app itself doesn't have these kinds of limits. It's really what the limits of Salesforce are. Great. Um, there's another question as well. Some uh, Boren was asking, is there a free version of Dryad or something people can use to get started right now? No, unfortunately not. I, I do want to have some ability to do some kind of trial. I haven't set it up just yet. There hasn't, honestly, there hasn't been a lot of demand for it just yet. Uh, but it is something I'm I'm looking forward to exploring further. Perfect, thank you. And for everybody who's who's listening, we're going to share this presentation as well. We've included a few links and resources as well at the at the bottom here. So for additional context, or if you want to dig a bit deeper, 
that's a good place to, to go in. Alex, another question, if people want to find you, want to see a bit about the work you're doing and understand where can they find you? Do you have any other channels of communication that people might find interesting or useful or, or get value out of? Yeah, I mean, um, this is obviously focused on the receding side of things. I have a whole consulting business as well. That's under the name of Dryad Consulting. Maybe we can update the deck before we send this off. Yeah. Um, so I have that. I have a, a podcast that I do that has to do with nonprofits. I have an email list that I send to help junior Salesforce consultants. So I'm very vested in the Salesforce ecosystem. I've been to conferences and part of the community sprints as well. Uh, so it really is um, a labor of love for me. Great. Perfect. And yeah, I think with that, you know, updating the presentation with that information, as well as our, our email addresses, because I realized just now that we didn't include that. So if people want to reach out or have any questions, feel free to contact us um, with it, with any questions, either if they're IS related, drive, drive related. And of course, Alex and I are in contact quite often. So we're always happy to collaborate and see if, um, if there's a solution that we can help or if there's, you know, I, it isn't worth the try or vice versa. We're, you know, there to find solutions and, and very much echoing the sentiment of Alex really we are that we are here to try to empower nonprofits. That's that's overall the purpose. And and the more feedback and the more uh, conversations that we can we can help have, the the better it is. Uh, at, in in my opinion, for everybody involved. So, Alex, I really appreciate your time. Appreciate you sharing the work that you've put together. Any last thoughts that you want to leave us with? Any other additional ideas that you think would be helpful for anybody in the audience? Sorry, that, we didn't plan that no, one. Yeah, we, didn't plan <laughs> we didn't plan that question. Okay, I, I'm, I'm a man of little words. I'm, for, I'm, a, I'm a tech guy, right? So yeah. uh, I don't have a salesy uh, spin or, or to finish with. Uh, again, I, it's a pleasure to serve. That's I, I would just finish with that. Perfect. That's a that's a great way to to wrap things up. Kate, I don't know if you had anything else that you we needed something administrative in terms of follow ups or anything like that. Or, uh, no, this it, this has been recorded. So as Sebastian said, this will be shared out. Longer presentation. Um, yeah, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out uh, to me, to Sebastian, to Alex. Happy to help. Thank you so much, everybody who who attended.